presentation you are about to see was recorded at our April 2012 Aging in America conference in Washington, D.C. This general session was entitled, How the Boomers Will Transform Aging, and How Aging Will Transform the Boomers. With our boomer population turning 65 at the rate of 10,000 people per day, this powerful session literally rides in on the crest of the age wave itself. The session is led by ASA board member and AgeWave founder, Ken Dykwald. He's joined by four renowned thought leaders who address how longevity is changing our nation and how well we are equipped to deal with the aging of America. In addition to Ken Dykwald, you'll hear the insights and perspectives of Dr. Rhonda Randall, Chief Medical Officer of United Healthcare, ASA past board chair, Fernando Torres Gill, Gail Sheehy, author of such best-selling books as Passages and Passages in Caregiving, and Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post. And I've asked the panel if they would reflect on, as a closing comment, whether they feel the aging of the boomers at the end of the day is going to be a positive thing or not, and what could be done to make it more positive. Anybody want to go first? Well, I think that boomers will will create respect for aging um, because boomers will be smarter, uh, will come up with solutions not only for themselves and for making aging more humane and less expensive, but for others. I think that, I do think that there is a resurgence of activism and spirit, and not only among boomers, but even among those of us who actually did do the civil rights revolution and the women's <laughs> movement. Uh, the people just ahead of boomers. Uh, so I feel this, I see it, I, I'm reading it. Uh, and that can have a powerful effect on the, whole, on the whole society. We've got to get away from this insanity of materialism, of buying votes, buying Congress, you know, by, buying elections. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think boomers uh, know that and will we'll, we'll, We'll push that. Thank you, Gail. Rhonda. I think it's a positive thing, but as I discussed earlier, I think it's two sides of the same coin. Uh, just because of their sheer volume, uh, boomers are going to force health care to change. And the way that they buy, um, the way that they use consumer choice, the way that they're going to demand uh, individual and tailored products and services, one size is not going to fit all. But I think that they uh, also need to face the reality that health care and their health care needs as they age and start to develop chronic conditions will transform them. So while we can work on the health care delivery side um, to improve quality and pay for performance and, and m medical policy of what we want, I think we also have to expect consumers to play a very active role in managing their own health care and not just be passively engaged, but be actively engaged in, uh, they know their body better than themselves. They know that they know what they've been through. They've seen the experiences of their loved ones. They've gotten advice from many healthcare professionals before they make a decision. They're likely to walk into the exam room with their iPad and say, "But here's what I found on the internet," um, with their physician. So I think it, it's both uh, transforming the the way we pay for care as well as the way that consumers get activated in their own care. All right. Thank you, Ariana. So actually, what you said about how um, boomers will develop chronic conditions. I, what I would love to see is for all of us to recognize that life is a chronic condition. <laughs> that, you know, that death is inevitable. And I think our culture just keeps not recognizing that until we grow older. And I think if we can integrate it in our lives earlier, we would eliminate a lot of the fear. You know, other cultures integrate the reality of death. You know, even if you live until you are over a hundred, and even if you're completely healthy and have no chronic condition, that's the ultimate certainty. And if we integrate it in our lives, then we live life differently. You know, Socrates said, practice death daily. <laughs> he didn't mean it in a morbid sense. He meant it because it puts everything in perspective. If you just go through what we worry about every day, 99% of the things we worry about are trivial. 99% of the things we worry about, we should stop worrying about right now. <laughs> and I really mean that very strongly because I see my daughters, you know, and the things they worry about. You know, my daughters were like, 
have these perfect bodies, worry that they're overweight. You know, and I said, oh my God, you know, it's like, this is just a simple thing that young women constantly worry about, just as a small indication of the things we can absolutely put in perspective. And one more thing is, you know, so often we, we start in our minds all these projects that realistically we are never going to do. <laughs> so I found when, when I became 40, I made a list of all the things I was neither, I was not good at, like skiing, for example, or I was never really going to devote the time to get done, like learning German, and I dropped them. <laughs> And so I realized that you can complete a project by dropping it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's All right. Good. <laughs> so part of, part of aging has to be editing our lives, uh, recognizing these are the things we are going to concentrate on, and it's not going to be everything. Like when we start in life, we may want to experiment and try everything. At some point, we know more and more what we are about. And I loved, I want to end by really repeating um, what you said, Ken, that life is not linear. That I love that. It's not that we are educating ourselves, then we work, and then we have leisure. No, we have to integrate it all at once. It's all going to be right. this amazing experience going forward. So I, I love being 61. I mean, I just think I have never been able to navigate my life better. And I would love for us to be able to communicate that to the whole culture. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Fernando. Well, thank you, Ken, uh, again, for bringing us all together and to each of my panelists. You've given me new inspiration to look forward to being an aging baby boomer. Uh, I would only add to this that I hope and expect that our generation can be role models and mentors and give more attention to younger generations to both carry on, to both carry on the legacy of our parents and grandparents over the last 120 years, to carry on our legacy, but to give our children and grandchildren enough space to create their own greatest generation. So uh, look forward to aging with you and with them. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so my thought, um, I think we're really right at the crossroads. And um, I can envision the boomer generation becoming a bunch of narcissistic whiners and <laughs> I, I can truly envision that, all for me and you know, who cares about the others. And uh, We have that tendency. It's a part of our neuroses. On the other hand, I can also envision this generation rising to its greatest height, uh, taking advantage of all that we've learned, taking advantage of all that we feel and all that we see, uh, going down deep inside and thinking in terms of what is fairness, what really is justice, uh, what are the needs of not only people who have achieved but people who are more vulnerable. Uh, and I guess I'd like to feel that at this crossroads, we can all take a moment to reflect in the people we, con we come in contact with to take that side of the road, to rise to our greatest height and to live these final years with our greatest purpose. And uh, I do think we're at that crossroads. And I want to thank the folks from ASA for allowing us to have a, a session of this nature, thank my fantastic panelists, and wish you all the very best. And I think Lewis is going to come up. Thank you. I also want to take a quick second and again say thank you to our sponsors and for the tremendous support of today's incredible panel. It was wonderful. So thank you again for being a part of the ASA family and the Aging in America conference community and safe travels to all. <laughs>